in the previous session we talked about the expected questions on higher education we'll be covering school education for this session and in the next session we'll cover important expected questions for uh, environment and related topics now uh, these topics are relevant for the 2017 both the exams january and july as well as uh, these topics are important for the upcoming 2018 examinations as well Uh, now uh, here are some of the important links which we have already talked about in the previous lessons and we have covered this uh, the new education policy the credit based system and the youtube lecture which talks about these in the previous class now uh, moving on to the specific topics related to uh, school education uh, mainly, uh, mainly the schemes that have been promoted by mhrd so first of them is e pathshala e pathshala e means electronic so pathshala means school so it's a kind of electronic version of a schooling system where you have students from mainly cbsc uh, the ncert syllabus the gujarat board and the up board syllabus uh, where students would be able to learn through an online platform so the basic idea is anywhere any time and on any device so that was the basic motive to start this concept now when they started this concept they felt that 40% of the learning occurs through visual uh, methods only 10% occurs through what you hear and 50% occurs through kinesthetics so based on this they started this initiative and this was started by e path which is an uh, which is an initiative by acronym uh, india limited it's a kind of 20 years old group it has been producing material in electronic form broadcasting for uh, school education system some of its initiatives are already live in ais ahmedabad and toddler dense pre school in ahmedabad and varoda so e path was the main initiative and based on this they started a new concept which was e path shala which has been adopted by mhrd now the next is udisc now this is a very important section for uh, this year's examination uid uh, udisc is the unified district information system of education and that is the largest of its kind in the world where you are trying to uh, incorporate a database for all the schools in india across all boards now this was this concept was developed by national university for education planning and administration nupa nupa is a kind of important uh, body for specifically for net exams because there are numerous questions every time which are asked based on nupa uh, be it the organization structure be it the objectives and be it the body itself now this uh, body would record the dropouts in the school the condition of the school the basic amenities in the school and there have been three mobile applications that has been released first is the school finder the next is school report cards and next is the compare schools so all these three mobile applications would help uh, parents and students uh, find the various uh, uh, opportunities in the school and the conditions in various schools now there are some of the basic facts that were laid down by udisc uh, the first is punjab has the lowest girl enrollment at primary level now based on these results that were drawn uh, nupa has suggested to develop uh, uh, focus areas to work on chandigarh has the lowest number of schools in rural area punjab has lowest girl enrollment in upper primary level as well as the uh, primary level then highest percentage of female teachers are found in chandigarh up has highest number of schools and highest number of teachers however jaipur district in rajasthan has highest number of teachers if we come on to the district level analysis so this body basically maintains a comprehensive profile of not only the schools but also the teachers which covers nearly 7.96 million teachers in its database now based on this there was another need that was laid by nupa and that was the student database so that was named as the student database management information system the sdmis and this is a kind of again the largest in the world and a kind of very unique system where nearly all the students enrolled in various grades from 1 to 12 would be part of this system there would be a kind of academic track that would be maintained from class 1 2 3 onwards till 
class 12th and a kind of progress report for every individual student would be accounted into this every student's aadhar card would be linked to this uh, system as a result uh, it would be easy to analyze whether there is a need for merit scholarship or means scholarship uh, it would also develop a kind of child tracking system and it would include both the government and the private schools now what kind of information will the sdmis system include it would include the general and the personal information of every child the academic information the scholarship information the attendance information facilities health information family information examination achievement and disability information so it would be a kind of uh, unified system which would provide every kind of information for each and every child and what will be what will be the basic uh, methods based on which it would be segregated is firstly the gender the medium of instruction the gross enrollment ratio age grade the class then the social category uh, so it would help uh, everyone update on the real time data uh, the grade tracking and the grade monitoring the progress of a child would be uh, 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 would be part of the system also if a child is repeating any class or if there is a kind of um, uh, uh effort which is required for a specific class or a specific subject would also be part of the system so it's a kind of very unique system which has been recently introduced now the next is gender atlas gender atlas is a kind of digital atlas for advancing girl education and promoting girl education particularly so it would be focusing on two components the performance of girls and the vulnerability so the vulnerability means they will pick out the areas where you have kind of less girl uh, education that is being promoted so it would be pockets which are kind of i could say minority groups sc sts or disability groups would be uh, brought about then there would be mii mmis that is a map management information system which would be a visual system which would help you analyze all this information on a map and there would be five focus areas based on which the gender atlas would be devised the first is the trend analysis the special uh, the special distribution which includes the special focus districts the beti bachao beti padhao districts educationally backward blocks extremist blocks and the affected districts then you have children with disability uh, vulnerabilities on girl education and the comparative composite index based on quartile ranking so the uh, method is also important here so it would be a kind of principal component analysis that would be taken into consideration for creation of gender atlas now for specifically for girl education there has been another scheme which is udan which we will discuss later another important scheme that has come up is the school gis that means mapping of the schools so all the schools across india would be mapped on a uh, common uh, map of india and that has been a project which has been uh, initiated by department of school education and literacy mhrd the ministry of human resource and development and government of india uh, when we are talking about visualizing it would provide the amenities the road structure and the basic accessibility to the school areas it would also link the school to the udisi system which we have already discussed now next is rashtriya avishkar abhiyan it's a kind of aaa project that has been re- released and it talks about uh, development of science and uh, kind of dual track approach what is the main idea of this scheme is that is within the classroom and outside the classroom so not only promoting education within the classroom but providing education in terms of uh, b- uh, base knowledge or ground knowledge is also important so the focus of rashtriya avishkar abhiyan is integration of science technology and mathematics under a common head and uh, to develop and encourage child for a kind of real life or a real encouragement to the subject uh it's mainly aim for age group 6 to 18 years and it talks about uh, education beyond the schools so the basic idea is nurturing uh, students for various competitions and clubs then you have the sensitization and engagement of students towards environment excellence in science maths and technology 
support system for teachers, school facilities and effective classroom interaction with assessments which are taken place outside the school premises, uh, outside the classroom premises or uh, on ground. The next is you have various kind of organizations that are meant for teachers development. The one of it is the National Council for Science and Technology Communication which talks about the National Science Congress. This is for ch children but similar to this you have another which organizes a teachers science congress and teachers training program similar to the refresher programs for uh, college teachers or university lecturers. You have uh, similar programs which are now started for school teachers and the basic idea is provide the training and there would be a kind of 8 hours of training for 15 settings. So that is a kind of basic aim. Then you have initiative for research and innovation in science focusing on development of science and promotion of science in schools. It is a partnership program with uh, the uh, science and technology communication the NCSTC and Intel India. Now next is as I said there was another scheme for girls that is Udan and it is released by MHRD and government of India. It is aimed to address the low enrollment of girls in engineering courses mainly the premier engineering courses. As a result uh, this program aims to provide offline online courses, virtual learning, weekend programs uh, with preloaded tablets and uh, uh, you have study materials which are provided uh, during class 11th and 12th. The criteria for this is the family income should be less than 6 lakhs per annum and minimum 70% of the marks in class 10th should be uh, re are required with 80% in science and mathematics in class 10th and students must be enrolled in physics, chemistry and maths. This scheme is specifically for engineering background right now. The next is the National Curriculum Framework for Teachers Education 2005. Now the ideas of this are important because there has been off and on a question of re on reflective practices directly or indirectly. So I have included this here. Now reflective practice what does it talks about? It talks about a kind of continuous learning system where you have an ability to reflect to an action and it, it makes the learning more and more engaging. So it's a kind of continuous learning platform that you must promote. So reflective learning practice is the basic objective that uh, teachers education framework uh, try to impart and promote it to the students. There should be a kind of opportunity for self-learning, assimilation and articulation of new ideas, a kind of self-directed learning and ability to think and work in groups. So group learning is also encouraged under this program and you have a kind of uh, communication with individual children that is uh, focused in this program. Again there has been a new program developed by SCRT Delhi that is known as the online in service teacher capacity building program. Again as I said this program is similar to the refreshment programs at university level, uh, refresher programs at uh, university level. So this program also talks at building the capability of teachers and uh, you, uh, in the first month uh, this software helped to promote uh, it to 50 maths and 70 mentor teachers. Uh, this program is uh, accepted, uh, expected to spread to nearly 50,000 teachers. It will enhance teacher to teacher communication. As I said, uh, there would be 8 hours in each sitting and 15 sittings. So it would be a kind of 15 days program uh, with 24 7 accessibility to the course material and it would be a kind of capacity building program. Uh, recently in today's news there was again a news by CBSC similar to the CTET which is conducted for teachers uh, entry to the schools you would have a similar exam based on this which would be applicable for the principals of the school and again uh, the CBSC has started with the board examination for class 10th and the three language formula that talks about in compulsory Hindi compulsory English and another uh, non-Hindi uh, non language or I would say a kind of language which is regional, not a foreign language but a regional language from India uh, which would be the third language. So that has been again a news today itself so it's important. Then you have the All India Survey on Higher Education, the AISHE. 
uh, which is started in 2010 and 11 it will list all the major institutes which would provide the information on uh, higher education so it would collect the students database the teachers database the infrastructure of the institute and the examination results uh, this uh, all india survey has also included the third gender option recently so it was in news uh, then again the major indicators of development which would be incorporated are the density in the institution, the gross enrollment ratio, people uh, pupil te uh, teacher ratio, gender parity and per student expenditure. So these are some of the major indicators that will provide the educational development level for higher education. So with this we cover uh, the expected questions and the major uh, landmark uh, researches that have been done for school education system we will be uh, covering another session which will cover uh, important topics related to uh, uh, the environment and the upcoming issues uh, some other upcoming issues which uh, which i would feel are important okay have a good day